Hi, everybody. I'm Kate Kinney, registered dietitian with Kinema Fitness. Thank you so much for joining me, for checking in here in my kitchen this month. For February, our theme for our videos is core elements. So when I got to thinking about core elements in terms of nutrition, it really sort of brought me back to the basics of good foods that we should be eating to fuel our bodies. And there's so much nutrition information out there that it gets really mucky and complicated, but it doesn't really need to be. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to think about all of the foods that have a lot of nutrition to offer, really good, healthy foods that we should be including on a daily basis to help us meet our nutrient needs, keep us healthy, keep our calories in check so that we can um, focus on the positives rather than thinking about all the foods that we should maybe avoid or limit or have less often. So by focusing on the foods you should be eating, there's just less room for that other stuff. So when we get back to core elements, every meal and also at our snacks throughout the day, we should be thinking about getting in all of the macronutrients that our body needs. So carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And then a really good way to think about getting those nutrients is to look at all of the different food groups that we should be including. So number one, I would say vegetables, and we really want to vary our veggies. When you're including vegetables throughout your day, you want to include, get in some, some dark greens, some leafy greens, use the dark reds and oranges, those colored vegetables uh, tend to have a lot of really good nutrition and antioxidants and anti-inflammatories that um, really serve your body well. So getting, um, and then also choosing different vegetables from one meal or one day to the next so that they all have a little bit diff something different to offer you. So vegetables is one. Fruits, focusing on whole fruits too. So more so getting the whole fruit um, that includes all the fiber and all the pieces as opposed to fruit juice, which is okay once in a while, but making sure you're getting in the good um, whole fruit as well. We also want to be thinking about grains, getting grains in throughout our day. And when we choose grains, at least half of the grains we have in a day should be from whole grain sources. So thinking about um, whole wheat and things like brown rice and wild rice and quinoa, farro, oats are a great whole grain. Um, barley is a great whole grain. Um, so there's a lot of good ones out there. But when we say whole grains, the grain is left intact as opposed to the refined grains where they've sort of been milled apart and some of that nutrition is taken away. Um, and did I mention corn? Corn is another good one too, if I didn't, if I didn't already say so. So we've got vegetables, fruit, grains. We also want to be thinking about our different protein sources can come from animal products, can come from plant-based products, but we do want to stick with lean proteins most often. So thinking about poultry without the skin, if you're doing red meats occasionally and getting leaner cuts, fish, uh, eggs, beans, soy, all good sources of protein that we should have been including um, at each meal and, and throughout the day. Also dairy. Dairy is important, especially for that calcium piece. We, that's really um, one of the great nutrients we look to dairy for. And it could be a dairy substitute. So if you can't do cow's, cow's dairy, maybe it's soy or some other plant-based um, so that you can get that calcium fortified. But dairy is also a really good um, a really good provider of carbohydrate and, and protein. And there can be some saturated fat in there too. So we'll talk a little bit about, about that. Um, and then lastly, fat. So fat is an important part of the diet, but we really want to focus on the fats that come from plant-based sources. So the fats that you would get buying in olive oil, canola oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, those are the better fats than the saturated ones that you would find in those animal products like butter and cream and dairy or the, the fat marbling in, in red meat. So getting our carbs, pro protein, and fat from all of those different food groups and all of those different sources are the way to go. Now, what I have for you today specifically, I'm going to be making a stovetop Mexican quinoa. And what I love about this recipe and a lot of the other recipes that I keep in my daily repertoire is that the um, you're getting almost all of the food groups in one pot, in one location, in one meal. So it's really easy to put together and you're getting a little bit of the protein and the whole grains and the vegetables. And we're going to include some dairy and healthy fats as well. And if you pair it with some 
fruit for dessert, then you're actually going to cover all of your food groups. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I am going to start my stove top here and uh, just heat up some olive oil because we're going to saute some vegetables to get this, Mex this stove top Mexican quinoa started. So I've got some olive oil going in my pan here. And we're going to start off with a couple of different veg veggies. So I've got some diced onions and my shortcut, my favorite trick for this is I buy frozen diced onions in the freezer section of the grocery store. So I can um, just, I always have it available. I don't have to take the time to chop. So um, these are actually frozen diced onions that I'm going to add right to my pan. So my heated olive oil, and then I'm going to do about, um, I'm going to do a bell pepper as well. You could do red, you could do green, orange. I've actually got a yellow one cut up here already. So I'm going to add my bell pepper. I put these in first because they take the longest to sort of saute. And then I'm going to add a few other things as well. Um, the flexibility of this recipe is really nice though. If there are other vegetables that you think would sound good in a Mexican uh, quinoa, then go for it, add it here. These tend to be, um, I always do the bell peppers and, and the onions when I'm doing a Mexican flavored dish. All right, um, I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. And I'm actually gonna speed this up a little bit faster than I probably would. So you wanna cook these for just a few minutes till they get a little soft. The onions start to get a little bit translucent. And then uh, for this recipe, we're also going to add some jalapeno, which I've already chopped. I've minced it up pretty small. So I'm gonna put that in here too. And then at the end of the sauteing process, we're gonna add a little bit of, of garlic here. While that is cooking, I'm going to let you know that um, I've already done a little bit of prep work with the quinoa. So quinoa, you buy, and it's a, oh, there's my dog, in a, um, in the grain section by the rice. And you have to rinse it unless it says it's already rinsed because the, um, there's like a, a little bit of residue in there that has a bitter flavor. So I have a very fine strainer. You have to make sure you have one small enough because quinoa, if you've never cooked it, is actually very, very small grain. It's a really easy one to cook. So if you can see that, it's pretty small. We're gonna get dog noses up here, here and there through my video, sorry about that. So that quinoa, I'm gonna measure out, I'm gonna put it in and rinse it off. And then I'm gonna make it ready to go in my pot which are in my pan. So I've already got my rinsed one right here. All right, so my veggies are getting nice and sauteed. I'm gonna put in a little bit of garlic. Oh, and I, want, I wanted to mention, this recipe is available to you under the February recipe link. So you don't need to worry about the quantities that I'm putting in. It's all gonna be listed out for you. And I've actually cut this recipe in half. I already cooked part of it so I can see the, show you the finished product without um, you having to wait for the whole cooking, cooking process. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of garlic here. And just saute that for a minute. And then we're gonna be ready to add the quinoa. Now, quinoa is one of my, it's a really great whole grain. It's gluten-free. So if anybody has celiac or gluten intolerance, you don't need to worry about that. Um, and it is actually one of the higher protein containing grains out there. So it's a whole grain, really good nutrition, good fiber in there, helps fill you up, make you feel satisfied. And there's also gonna contribute some um, protein as well. A little bit more than some of the other grains like rice or like a whole grain pasta would. All right, I need to give it some liquid. So I am going to do a little bit of my chicken broth. Where's my measuring cup? Oh, I'm gonna put my corn in. I've got corn, you can throw it. Um, I, I use frozen. I am gonna throw it in frozen because it's gonna cook or you can let it thaw out first. I'm gonna do, I have a chicken broth here. If you wanna keep this vegetarian, use a veggie broth. You could actually use water as well. Um, because I use a chicken broth, I'm gonna add a little bit less salt to this recipe, but if you add water, you might wanna do a little bit more um, salt. Black beans, can of black beans. I've already got those rinsed off, so that's important. Dump them out, strain them, rinse it off. 
Um, that's going to help control the sodium intake too. All right, got my black beans. And then I'm going to add some fire roasted tomatoes. Or you can just regular, regular diced tomatoes. I happen to like the fire roasted ones, so I grabbed those. And those I am not going to drain. I'm going to dump that right in there and use that liquid to help cook the quinoa. All right, so you can kind of see here what I've got going on. Now, we want to let this come to a boil. And then we are going to just let it simmer with the lid on. And so the broth and the liquid from the tomatoes are going to cook that quinoa. If I were doing the whole recipe, this is about half. So I did about a half a cup of quinoa. Um, we want to cook it about 20 minutes is what the recipe says. Um, I did half a recipe and it was it only took about 10 minutes. So, but you do want to bring that to a boil first. Now, as that's coming to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and add my seasonings, which I haven't added yet. So um, I have chili powder, cumin, and some pepper. And then I mentioned the salt. I like to do that at the end, um, kind of to taste. So I'm just going to do a little black pepper. The main seasoning here, you do the most with the chili powder. The whole recipe calls for a teaspoon. I'm doing a half here. And then the cumin which obviously uh, cumin is a great, that's what we use for the Mexican flavor. And this is starting to boil, so it's perfect. As soon as I get this in here, I'm gonna stir it up and then put the lid on it. To bring that down to a simmer and let that quinoa cook. So now we've got in here our whole grains. Clearly, we've got lots of vegetables with the corn, the tomatoes, the peppers, the onions. We got some garlic and some other seasoning in there. And we've got beans, black beans for the protein. Now, if you wanted to add some more protein to this, if you wanted to do a ground turkey or something like that, you could cook that first. Um, I wouldn't brown the ground turkey in this mixture. I would cook, I would brown that first and then add it at this point. or even at the end after the quinoa has cooked would be just fine. So I'm gonna put a lid on here and turn this down to a simmer to let that quinoa cook. All right, so we've got almost all of our food groups in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, this is the one I already prepared. So the quinoa in this one is already cooked up for you. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's all finished. Now to finish this off, I'm gonna squeeze a little lime juice in there. So I've just got a lime that I cut in half. You could also, if you just have um, lime juice like in a bottle, you could do that too. About three tablespoons is the equivalent of a whole lime, just FYI. So I'm just squeezing half of it in there. I'm gonna give it a really nice flavor. And then what I've got here is the stuff that you can add on at the end. So let me scoop some of this up here. I've got my quinoa all cooked up. It smells really good. It looks really good. And then I'm gonna flavor, I love a little cilantro. So I'm gonna chop some of that, put some on for presentation purposes and then also flavor, of course. And then I've got avocado here, really great source of heart healthy fat. Um, so when you, I actually opened this avocado, we used it last night. So I cut it in half, you twist it open. And then I've got these little great little silicone um, avocado savers so I can use the other half. But I'm just gonna slice some of this up and I do this at the end, like when you're ready to serve it, you do, you can serve this immediately. So I would just scoop some of this out or chop it up a little bit and throw it on top. So we're getting our healthy fats included in this meal at all as well, I meant to say. And then if you want, if cheese is something that you're interested in, you could add a little dairy that way. Um, I tend to drink with my dinners, lactose-free milk. Um, I've been blessed as I've gotten older with um, developing a lactose intolerance when it comes to milk. So I've got a lactose-free milk, which would be a great dairy to serve along with this. Or if you want to add a little bit of cheese to it, my kids for sure 
would do that. I usually, I recommend 2% cheese. So this is a 2%, which basically just means that um, it's made with 2% milk instead of whole milk. So that saturated fat is reduced a little bit. And then we're still getting some good, we're getting a little bit more protein here and some of that calcium I mentioned earlier. Any other toppings that would sound good to you, feel free. But again, this way we kind of covered all of our bases with all of the different food groups. And as I mentioned, we're not, we're, we didn't include any fruit here, but you could certainly do that for dessert or your afternoon snack to make sure you're getting a very well-rounded diet throughout the day. And even as much as possible, getting foods from all those different food groups so you're nicely balanced with carbs and protein and fat. Um, at each of your meals and doing so when you're getting good carbohydrates, um, you're getting good fiber, which is very filling. That protein is also very satisfying as well. So bon appetit. I hope you um, can give this recipe a try. Feel free to modify with different veggies and different proteins. You could throw a little salsa in here if you wanted as well, but I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for joining me and uh, I'll see you next time.